Welcome, welcome. Our vibe, our tribe. Uh, really stoked to have a great guest today with me and uh, happy to have a bunch of the lads over here hanging out on Easy Street, deep in the heart of Lad City. If you're following along on YouTube, really appreciate it. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like it. And you can also come and join deeper into the metaverse action by typing in Lad City, that's L A D Z dot C I T Y, into your browser, and that will populate you a Discord invitation. You can come over, uh, you get a uh, Lad's token for free, and you can set up your roll wallet. Uh, that basically gets you in the door, and then there's amazing content. Um, DeFi, gaming, markets, art, music, basically anything crypto, metaverse, NFTs. Uh, as you come and participate, you get more lads dropped to you and you can rank up and get more exclusive content. So there's access to certain content when you reach above certain levels. Um, there are also more rewards for higher levels. So if you happen to be a liquidity provider, uh, something like that, you'll be getting drops of NFTs and, and cool raffles and of course, lads tokens. So wanted to give you a chance to come over and join the tribe in Lad City. Um, with that said, I think we'll kick off the show. Uh, like I mentioned, really amazing guest today uh, that I've been lucky enough to, to know for a while now. Uh, and we've bumped into each other uh, at many different metaverse events and we're both old scent OGs. And so welcome to the stage, Spherical Art. Hey, easy crypto. <laughs> easy in crypto, I should say. Hey, it's great to be here. Uh, it's good. I always hear your voice. So it's, it's great to be have a, a, a nice conversation with you. Um, absolutely yeah hey, you've, we've you've been really we've been busy running... to... go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> jinx uh, well, i was just gonna say we've been running in similar circles for quite a while but haven't actually gotten to just like hang out and have a conversation so i've been super excited for this and uh also i really like the show that you started up recently over on token smart uh interviewing some really great you know finding finding diamonds in the rough uh finding artists and letting them you know share their stuff with us so yeah it's really cool to to get to hear your voice a little more often these days and great to connect here in lad city Great. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, I've done three podcasts now, so I've, I'm a beginner, but I'm learning. Each one's getting better. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun discovering these uh, NFT artists. I don't, um, I don't interview anybody. I don't even tell them that I'm going to do it. Uh, nobody knows who I'm going to talk about till, till the show starts. Uh, so sometimes I, I will I'll contact the artist afterwards and, and tell them what I talk about. Uh, and sometimes I don't. I just wait for them to get some DMs, maybe. That is pretty cool. I love, <laughs> like, because sometimes I'll have, you know, a guest like yourself on, and we, we have a little bit of history. And then sometimes it's, you know, somebody that I've maybe just seen uh, their Twitter profile or something like that, where a guest gets brought in um, by, you know, maybe another member of the lads family team, you know, recommend somebody and they come on. And so it's always really interesting to just go in with kind of, uh, you know, almost no knowledge and, and you just get to learn about the person along with the crowd. And I think that's cool that you're keeping it kind of a, a surprise until showtime. Yeah. And, and a lot of the people that I'm, you know, I'm new in the token smart. I'm not new in token smart. I've been a member for a long time, but I wasn't active in it. So, um, so I'm getting to know, these people are getting to know me. So uh, I do a little bit of biographical material, maybe a couple minutes of it each show. It's just so they get, get a sense of uh, who I am. I had a, um, a really bad experience on the first show. I, I, I was all set to live stream. I had all my uh, all my tabs on my browser. I was going to share, and uh, and then I got the black screen of death in oh, Discord no. on the screens. Yeah, I all my screens were black. So um, to save the day, I dropped everything into the chat, and uh, that worked out so well. And I could see what everybody else was saying. So uh, I thought, hey, I'm going to do this every time. So I'm going to do this tonight as well. I'm going to drop it. stuff here in the chat and, and see what people say. And if people have comments, want to talk to me, it's great. And we'll have a conversation. Awesome. Yeah, it's really cool to be able to take advantage of this kind of space like we have here in Discord over in Lad City to really get to know somebody. So again like it's cool to you know watch on youtube maybe live is a little more exciting after the fact you can still absorb the 
stuff, but to really be in the conversation over in Discord, you know, exchanging gifts and being able to ask questions and, and have the, uh, the guest really participating there actually, you know, I think really spices up the whole, uh, the whole night. So that's rad that, that you're getting involved deep in the, in the chat with us. Yeah. So, uh, hey, so what, where should we start? We, I guess. Well, we have, go ahead. Yeah. I well, I was gonna say I do. I kind of have a, a a question that I like to start things off with. I really roll just very organically, but it's so fascinating to me how people kind of first got that love of art. And then a little journey of, you know, how they got into crypto and got bit by that bug and, you know, went down that rabbit hole because everybody's journey is so different. Uh, some people it's like in the blood and they're, you know, one of the parents or both the parents were an artist and maybe the grandparents too. other people. It could be, you know, a school teacher or a certain, you know, event that you went to. So I always love to hear the background and kind of how you got first, you know, uh, how you found and explored your love of art and then kind of a little bit of what led you to, to getting into to this crypto metaverse space? Well, um, I come from a big family. I have six brothers and two sisters. So, uh, and none of them are into art. Real well, so, some of the younger ones took it up after I did. But when I came around, um, we had coloring books at home, but they were all used, you know, all scribbled in. Uh, I, I didn't, I never saw a new one. So um, I used to, uh, I figured out that I could go get my mom's typing paper. She had this stuff is like onion skin. You could see through it. And so I would put that over the comic or the uh, coloring book page and I would trace out the lines of the picture. And then I would color that piece of paper. So as I was, you know, copying those line, that line work uh, from the coloring book, I was wondering, I started to think maybe the artist who did the coloring book, he copied it from somewhere else. <laughs> So I got really into copying. Uh, I, in, in grade school, I was, I was copying everything. I was making money. I was making like uh, $10 bills, uh, counterfeit, you know, and showing them off and, and nice. stuff like that. In third grade, I was doing this. So, oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I just liked the feedback I got, you know, like, like in third grade, I remember they gave us an assignment to draw a boat, right? So some people drew a dinghy. Some people drew a sailboat with one sail. Well, we got the National Ge Geographics magazine at home, you know, so uh, that month they had the, the Mayflower uh, on the cover and they had like a diagram of all the decks and what was there inside, you know, bags of grain and horses and all that stuff and all the sails and rigging. So that's what I did. I did this huge picture of the, of, of the Mayflower and... Um, I liked the feedback I got in school, so I, I just kept doing it. You know, I, I knew guys who would draw cars. That was a big deal if you could draw a really cool car in grade yeah. school. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, if you could draw a sports figure, that'd be pretty cool, too. I used to draw these heads where you'd take the paper and fold it up, and then, and then you'd fold it up so some of the paper is hidden. And then you would draw a person's face, and then you'd show it to somebody, and then you'd pull the paper hot. Pull it, pull it flat so there's no folds, and the person, the person's head that you drew would come apart, and there would be brains and blood and bone and all that stuff. And that's that's the kind of stuff a, a kid would do. And that I, is cool. And I like to do that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So I, I knew in third grade I wanted to be an artist, and so I always had an uh, an art an art job, an art related job. Every job I took, it was like an art-related job. So, like, I was a sign painter. I was a silkscreen printer. I was, um, I, I painted the numbers on the, on the curb in my neighborhood. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? I, I painted some, the sides of trucks, you know, or the people's names and stuff. Um, and, and I went to, uh, you know, I was, I was really into it in school, in high school, you know, and, um, I remember I did a piece, I did a, I did a monkey, a chimpanzee uh, smoking a joint. And it looked like a cigarette if you didn't know what a joint looked like. And because I went to a Catholic high school. And so the nuns thought it was cool. They didn't understand what it was. So yeah, exactly like that, he's in crypto. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they hung it at, at an art exhibit in the high school, you know, like the, the en entry hall, you know, where all the trophy cases are and all that stuff. And, and this guy stole it, um, and he, he was expelled a little while later for, some, for another 
for getting into a fight. So uh, I forgot all about that picture. And then um, I went to my 20th high school reunion and uh, he showed up at the door. He didn't come in. He wanted to see me. And, and so somebody came and got me and said, hey, this, this guy wants to see you. And he, he says, come out to the parking lot. Follow me out to the parking lot. I was a little nervous because he, <laughs> he got expelled for a fight. So uh, he, he opened his car and he pulled out that picture all framed up and everything. He said, I've been, holding, I've been holding this for 20 years. <laughs> he says, I'm going to give it back to you, man. That I, is pretty incredible. I, I had to accept it. I had to accept it because to say, no, you keep it, it would have been, would have been wrong. But now I, now I wish I could give it back to him, but I don't know where he lives anymore. So. That is an epic story. I mean, from start to finish, first of all, sneaking the doobie smoking monkey past the teachers because they're just like oblivious and don't catch on to the joint. And then having it get stolen, the kid expelled from school and you get it back 20 years later. Like that's I, I love that kind of stuff. That's exactly why I like to ask these questions. <laughs> so uh, so I, I, I went to I went to UCLA. I studied fine art. I, I took painting and sculpture and ceramics and I did stained glass after, I, you know, when I wasn't at school. And, you know, I, I, I dabbled in everything, but I, I realized that I, I really didn't do art unless I had an assignment. You know, and it, when you get out of school, if there's nobody to give you an assignment. So you have to sort of get an art-related job to get a commission, you know, to get somebody to ask you to do something. I wasn't self-motivated, let's put it that way. Um, so, um, so I got a job in advertising and, and I started, uh, I went to night school to learn about advertising design. And I, I, after, uh, two semesters there, the, one of the teachers said, you should go to New York city. And I was so gullible. I said, okay. So I, I went from, I was in Los Angeles, you know, a suburb of Los Angeles. And I, so I just, I was 20, I was 23 and I just moved to New York city and got a job in Manhattan as an assistant art director. And uh, so I did that for like 10 years. Um, so yeah, so the, you know, so then I got, uh, I, I got to hate art direction after a while because it got mm -hmm. political. So, that, so that, you know, there's too much business and not enough art. So I wanted to, uh, to do artwork for other art directors. So that's when I became a storyboard artist and I, a sketch artist. And, and I did that for like 10 years. So, um, uh, so yeah, I've had a lot of jobs. Then I just then I got tired of New York altogether, and I said I got to get out of here. And I went to San Diego, and I started doing watercolors. And uh, I was going to make a living at, at doing watercolors, but it didn't happen. So then I started looking for more commercial type jobs uh, in in the West Coast area, and uh, I I found uh, some people wanted to hire me to because I could draw. You know, they they wanted to hire me to do medical illustrations. So I started doing that um, in out at Newport Beach is where I started that, and uh, and I still do that today. So that's that's uh, kept me eating for the last twenty four years. But some, you know, I lost an account, and I had a lot of free time on my hands. So um, uh, so I started doing digital art because I had Photoshop, I had the three D programs, uh, and I started doing digital art, and and um, I got really t interested in this um, this technique. Called, uh, well, I call it spherical art. Okay, that's how I took my name. But what it is, is you, you, you take a, uh, like a, a geodesic dome or a, a, a polyhedron, or, you know, a faceted sphere, and you put a camera inside of it with lights and, you, and different lenses, and you can get some really cool patterns. And so I got so excited about doing that that I, uh, I just started to explore that more and more and more. And I ended up, you know, the work that I was getting from commercially was sort of getting in my way. I wanted to do my artwork instead. Um, and I'm still that way. You know, I still have some assignments I got to do for clients, but, but I'd rather be doing art. So uh, this year I started, I started to sell. Last year, I, I guess I started NFTs in January of 2020. That's before the pandemic started. Um, I found out about Scent. Well, I was on Twitter. I've been on Twitter for like five years, posting every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And so I had a lot of followers. And this one, this one lady, her name is Pajarita Flora. You've probably heard of her. He's in crypto. Mm -hmm. He invited me over 
to a super rare. She said, why don't you go to a super rare? And this is when it was easier to get into. And uh, so I said, oh, I let it sit for a few months, but then I said, okay, maybe I should try it out. So I went to their site and, and the, uh, the, um, the application said, tell us what your social media sites are, you know, your, your earls. Mm. And, and one of them was sent. I go, what the hell is sent? I never heard of that before. So, so I checked out sent and jumped in and like the first person I met there was Matthew. And, uh, and after posting some artwork there for a couple of weeks, Matthew wanted to interview me. So, uh, so I really got, I got, I felt really welcomed by the attention I was getting in sent. So I started doing all kinds of stuff here. I'll drop some stuff in here. It's about time we drop some stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. The, this is the first NFT that I sold. This is my first NFT that I sold. Well, actually, it's the it's not the first one I sold because I gave some away, as you know. Uh, I'll show some of those too. But this one, this one, uh, um, Cameron from Scent, one of the Scent uh, people, bought it. It's the Scent logo spinning like a top. So you know, it's just a 3D thing. But I I just got I liked Scent so much that I started playing with its uh, logo. You know, try, what can I do with the logo? So um, I'll show you another one here. Matthew's used this one a lot. Uh, it, it takes a little while, but I bought Nitro so I can upload big stuff. Nice. Yeah, I just got Nitro <laughs> myself. I mean, so you actually, that's really cool. That The first time I've heard someone coming into Scent through an artist application form on another platform like uh, Super Rare. That's really cool that like they had that um, kind of yeah. space there and that you were one of the to questions. find it. That's yeah, it was one cool. of the questions. So, uh, so, so then, so then uh, Matthew started up the. Um, it was called the Scent Meetup. It, this was pre WIP. This was yep. the the early WIP, right? And Matthew was going to say, "Why don't we all get together in crypto voxels and we'll have like a you know like a group?" And I think the first group was maybe like you know twenty five thirty people showed up, and and then it just kept building, and and, and Clay, there was an artist on set called Clay Cal. And Clay oh, yeah, Cal, Clay Cal 303. Uh, he was amazing. He's amazing. He still is amazing. And, but he, and he did these really trippy cartoon-like on acid um, illustrations. I just loved him. You know what I mean? The guy sitting in front of a, a computer and he's got like uh, seeds coming out. He has a plant coming out of his head. <laughs> right? Yeah. He's drinking coffee. And there's, I don't know, strange psychedelic stuff happening in his images. But uh, so he gave away these NFTs for free. If you came to the, if you went to the event, you didn't get a POAP, you got an NFT. And this was back when it was cheaper to mint NFTs. So that's probably where you, you said that you, you gave out NFTs at the, at the meetings. Yeah, I, I, I was, a, I was the, um, the, the, like, uh, whip rewards uh, delivery man. So I would get, you know, I would go through, get all the addresses from the uh, guest book that was signed. And then we would get, uh, you know, from yourself or from, um, you know, one, one of the other artists, Clay Cal, or um, yeah, there was a, a couple pretty prolific, uh, and I'm blanking on his name right now, and he's made like amazing wearables for me and stuff, Pandex. Um, you know, would, would drop stuff for the, the people that came to the, to the whip meetups. And then I would get to send them all out. Uh, in fact, I just grabbed, so that was pre POAP, but it was the same idea of a proof, proof of participation, proof of attendance badge. And this is one of, uh, one of the ones yeah, I really loved well. from you. Yeah. That one. Is, that was uh, the day. This one that you just uploaded here was, is the one where scent came out with a new logo. And, and so I had the old scent exploding in space and turning into the new scent. Uh, yeah, this one, this juggler that I put in here, this was like the third, I did six in a row, six whips in a row. And I, so I gave out like uh, maybe some, some of sometimes I gave out 75 NFTs at, at a meeting. One time I would give out like 85, 90. I would do like a hundred. I did them on mint base and it would cost me about 12 bucks to do a hundred. Man, uh, back to gas. Yes, you know, those are the old days. So, so anyway, this juggler is is uh, inside Matthew's. That's Matthew's um, gallery inside oh. Crypto Voxels. He invited awesome. me over there to to see his uh, etchings, if you will. So, <laughs> so I went over there and saw his NFTs, and uh, and so I'm juggling the old scent 
logo. That's the, the black ball there with the dots on it. That's the old scent logo. And then I'm juggling the the crypto voxels ball. That's the that's the pixelated one with a C. And then that's my logo there, the S A. So uh, the, the title of that is thrown together. So I had to learn how to animate a little bit to, to do. These are the first gifts I was doing. So it was, I had to, to make them loop. And, and I wanted e I wanted every NFT that I did for the um, for the meat with whips to be um, animated. Damn so, good looping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I spent a lot of time on this. I, obviously, I didn't have much else to do because I did spend a lot of time on that one. Um, so yeah. It was a lot of fun. I, I just liked the uh, I liked the fact that every I mean I didn't make any money, but I liked the fact that everybody had one of my NFTs in their wallet. That that's a nice feeling. So uh, yeah, and it was so it was so rewarding to get those like super treat NFTs. You know, you sign the guest book, and you know uh, a week later or something, boom, you've got this new NFT uh, in your wallet from that. And, and it was just like, there was a great range from, you know, wearables to the art you made to like Clay Cow's very different style that we talked about. Um, I'm actually looking at my, uh, my collection now, and it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. So I I'm incredulously, I must have missed a whip. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to compare notes and find out which one you're missing. You, you should have uh, you should have a complete set. So I've got extras of, of all of them. So just let me know. Awesome. I, this picture I just uploaded with this uh, guy who's made out of shards. Um, he's made out of triangles because most of the work I do in 3D is triangular. You know, the the, the facets are triangular. So um, this was my Genesis piece on Super Rare, and uh, I almost sold it a few times. Uh, this was back when, when ETH was like $150, and um, somebody offered me, first they offer you one uh, uh, tenth of an ETH, and then they up it, you know, and it got up to where it was like one ETH, and, and I said, nah, I, I want to hold that for two ETH, because I think it's worth 300 bucks. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I think so I made a mistake. <laughs> I think I made a mistake. You know, who, you know who offered me one and a half ETH for it was Basilith. Oh. He's a he's a big time collector. I should have said yes. He wow. even contacted me and he said, "Would you sell it?" And I said, "No, I'm going to hold out for two weeks." He said, "Well, good luck to you, man." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wow. Yeah. No, he's he's a prolific collector for sure. He is. Um, I just I sh I was stupid there. I should have taken him up on it. I still have it now, still for sale. <laughs> but that's I mean that's pretty pretty awesome to to hold your Genesis piece. Like I know uh I've spoken with other artists that have that have both sold and you know kind of regretted it and others that have held and been like, yeah, I don't know if I can sell it, like you know, probably some gigantic uh you know, a pile of ETH, yeah, sure, let it go. Um yeah. but you know, that's probably a pretty special one to to I you. I, I mean it's an amazing piece. Thank you. I, I like this uh GIF here, or this gif of the guy in the in the the flamingo going down the, the <laughs> river. That's cool. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, so it seems like just recently, though, uh, or I guess it was in April, we, you and I were on the stage together at, at a WIP meetup. And I, it was the first time I got to speak at a WIP meetup. I've been to a lot of WIPs, but never got on the stage. And uh, you were there talking about Cypher. And I was talking about, it was held in my gallery called Headspace. And uh, that, was, that was the highlight of this year so far for me, was to have that, that meeting. To have Matthew and Rizzle and, and you and everybody else uh, there in my gallery with all my art up on the wall, that was really a uh, highlight of the year for me. That's awesome. Yeah. Now the year is young. <laughs> right, the year's right. only halfway through. I might have another big moment. <laughs> true, true. I hope so. But I um, remember you talking about Cypher and, uh, with Kinshasa. Or, and, and, uh, and I just, congratulations on your, uh, on your uh, launch today. It's thank fantastic. You. And, and yeah, I went to your website and, and I checked it out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. It's amazing. I don't know how you got this uh, idea, but... I, uh, I'm, I'm a big music lover and I really, uh, I think what you did here is so big. 
Thank you. And would love to have you try it out. And yeah, come, you know, it, uh, if it works with your schedule, come and buy one of the ciphers. We are super excited that we launched today and we had a great little launch party. Uh, we will be doing like a kind of pop up launch after party uh, tomorrow, actually, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific in the Cypher Discord. Uh, and then our normal Sunday ciphers. Uh, are also in the Cypher Discord at uh, Startup at 3, 3 p.m. Pacific as well. And those run for hours. I think we went uh, over four hours last time because just it's so much fun, you know, just rapping with your friends. And like, we're going to be doing more things too so that people will be able to like produce beats and kind of get that aspect of it. So, you know, people will be able to bring beats and then kind of uh, match talent between you know rappers and, and producers and stuff like that but yeah it's been exciting that that the, your gallery is amazing in fact on the youtube uh right now uh nifty q godfather of lad city is is over in there and and walking around and streaming it so really really cool a lot of amazing work up there man great well i'm going to talk about that in a minute uh first i want to mention i i, I posted this whale image that i did I joined the whale community last um, April when uh, uh, when I won a contest had a contest called uh, uh, the uh, Grow Your Scent uh, Artwork Contest. I remember that one. Yeah, so I did that and I got off my experience of doing GIF or GIFs for the uh, for the WIP meetup. So uh, I won that uh, and I I got like one ETH prize, it was like 300 bucks. And so I, I spent the entire 300 bucks on whale coin when it was under a dollar. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a fan of whales and I joined the, the whale community. And so this was my, uh, this little gif here with, uh, which is what I call wingman. And that's, that's me holding on to the big whale there and going underneath there with the lights on uh, the, the surface lighting on our backs as we're going through the water. Um, Incredible lighting effects there with the yeah, ripples. That took a while. I had to get a, uh, I bought a, a whale model on, on the online. You can buy these models already made and animated. And, and then I got a man from, uh, from another a 3D program and stuck them on there. And uh, yeah, it is just, just, you know, trying to make your imagination come to life. That's all it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, so then I started, but I didn't really sell much last year in 2020, but in 2021, you know, when things blew up, the, the NFT scene got hot. Um, I, I uh, got invited to, to uh, join Terra Virtua, and I put some stuff up there that, that sold right away. I want to show you, uh, this is an animated, this is actually, uh, I mean, the whale is a regular 3D uh, piece, but, but, I wanted to show you some, some landscapes that I do that are inside spheres. So this one I just uploaded, it's, it's launching now. Um, it's like a, if you play it, you can hear some water too. But you can see the, see the way the waves move and see how the mist is rolling in from the ocean. Mm. Um, it's going up the hill. Yeah, so, so I was able to sell that one on Terra Virtua and I'll show you another one that sold really fast. And I was getting like, you know, it, over on Terra Virtu, it's different. They, when you submit your art, it goes into their wallet, not your wallet, right? And, and, right. and it doesn't fill up on OpenSea. But they do have buyers, and you put the price you want down for, so like, I think these sold for $1,500 a piece. Uh, nice. Yeah, so that, so that gave me some spending money to, to play with, uh, you know, to buy different coins with and, you know, see see what what kind of investment i could make this is i like abstract art a lot and this one was done inside a sphere as well this is a uh, I, I call it this one is called petrol in puddles gasoline in puddles of water um, sometimes you know how it makes iridescent patterns um, yeah that yeah. is trippy it's just uh, cool. yeah it just keeps uh, keeps moving around and that is also one of the terra virtua um pieces? yeah that's a terra virtua piece and, and I did a lot of uh, I did a lot of gifs there, um, and some of them are geometric. Like this one I just loaded here; uh, it's loading right now. Um, it has uh, I work in I work in a three D program called Moto, and I also work in After Effects. And After Effects has a lot of third party plugins, and I got these really cool transitions 
um, as a package of transitions. So what I would do is I would go back in my archives and take different pieces of art and, and put them together, put two or three or four together and one piece and make a GIF out of it. So that's what this one is. This one is Ooh. just two images that are transfer that are transforming into each other. I actually have done something a little kind of similar uh, recently yeah, yeah. where, yeah, I hadn't ever done a lot of motion art, um, but I like overlaid these three different images. Uh, one was like a uh, building in San Francisco and another was like a full moon from down in Costa Rica. And another was like uh, they morph into each a other? nature spot. Uh, what? They morph into each other. Well, I kind of overlaid them and then like, it, and this was doing like very outside my normal art. Then I like mirrored it and threw on some other effects and gave it some motion. And it yeah. just was totally different than what I normally do. Actually, it was for a collaboration with It's Music Time uh, or It's Mustache Time, It's Music Theory um, with IMT. Uh, and they were dropping it on charged particles. So it was actually my first uh, collaborative music piece as well, where I did the, uh, you know, the uh, visual for, for their music piece. And it just kind of, the, the track gave me some inspiration and I wanted to have some movement. And I just kind of pushed out of my normal, like kind of comfort zone, you know, and was awesome. like, okay, I'm doing something different here. And uh, awesome. actually, yeah, I like the way it turned out. So I, I want to see it. <laughs> let me, uh, let me see if I can find see it. See if you can throw it up here. Me. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of projects I'm working on right now, and I wanted to tell everybody about them just because this is what I'm excited about right now. Uh, the first thing is the uh, is the podcast that I'm doing that you mentioned we mentioned earlier, and I'm just going to upload a for that. It's on the Token Smart uh, server. It's on Mondays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It goes for an hour. Okay, so that's my little artwork that I put together for, for the announcement. The other thing I'm doing that's a lot of fun. Uh, well, let me let me stay on this podcast here for a second. Uh, Matt, Magmaster, uh, he's the one who suggested I do it because he and I were talking about artists that we were collecting. Because when you start making money as an artist, then you want to start buying other artists' work. At least that's my experience. So um, we were bragging about you know what great deals we got on these fantastic artists we just discovered. And he said, you should do a podcast like that. So uh, uh, that's how that came about. And I'm learning. I'm glad I'm doing it because you should always do a show on something you want to learn. And, and I need to know more about artists and I need to know more about how to collect. And so hopefully I'll learn as I, as I, as I talk about it. I'll find out from feedback that I get or from research that I do for the show uh, how to do it better. So um, and. So that's that. Now, the next thing is I, I met this guy. Or I, I saw his work on um, one of the platforms. I think it was Rarible. And he, uh, he does, he's a musician. You know, he's, he's a rock musician. Like he plays with a, a traveling band that goes na nationwide tours. Uh, and they, they're a tribute band for Eric Clapton. And he, he plays the organ, the Rhodes organ, and he plays the piano. And he's their musical director. And this guy, this guy studied, went to university and studied performance art and stuff. He's really, he's the most talented person I've met, I think, in the NFT space when it comes to music. He writes uh, incredible classic melodies uh, at the drop of a hat. He, he, imp he can do it on the spot and improvise. He's like, to me, I, I think of him, he's like uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart to me. So, so anyway, I asked him if he would like to collaborate with me. And his name is Robert Monroe. And uh, so we minted, we did three pieces and they haven't been dropped yet. I'm hiding them from the public because I want a drop party. And we haven't gotten somebody to offer us a drop party yet. But I did do two samples. The pieces go for like a minute and a half, but I, I did a, two uh, 20 second samples. So I'm gonna drop, drop them here so you can see and hear what they sound like. Awesome. This, this one is, this first one, I tried to make the visuals uh, move to his music, uh, a la Fantasia, if you remember that old Disney movie. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so that, so I, and I'm, and I'm doing my traditional, uh, you know, inside the sphere geometry here with this uh, breathing sample. So you can, you can hit play that and check it out. And then I'll load the other one while you're doing that.
his melodies are very haunting. That's and, incredible. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, to have the movement and like the color changes go with the like feel of the, of the melody is really tough. You, you nailed that. Yeah, that's, it's not easy. Sometimes you just have to let, like let the music be itself and you have to do something else most of the time. But sometimes if you have certain controls over uh, movement or color or, you know, it, like for example, there's some, there's some uh, plugins or techniques you can use in After Effects where you, you keyframe the audio volume and then you make things move according to that audio volume. Well, that's okay for a bass line, but if you're doing that on a piano where every note is like a percussion, it's it's too herky jerky. I mean, it, it's yeah. annoying. It's annoying. So so you had it, it only works in some cases. So I had to find some other way to do it. Um, let's see. Okay, so the, like the next thing I I I'm really super excited about is interactive NFTs. Ooh, Not only yeah. interactive NFTs. Now the re how I found out about them is through uh, Natural Warp. Do you know who he is? Yep. Uh, yep. Absolutely. Okay. He's really active. Uh, he's he's the he's almost like the prince of uh, Somnium space. <laughs> he's really big there, <laughs> and he uh, uh, he invited me very early on, la you know, last year to um, to to show my work in his builds in Somnium space, and I found out that that he does these interactive uh, spherical 3D or interactive, they're called 360 photospheres or image spheres. And uh, so I wanted to do, do them, but there's only one platform that, uh, that uh, hosts them, you know, that makes, that enables you to do them. And that's Known Origin. Well, I went to Known mm -hmm. Origin then to, to sign up, but they're closed. All the, they don't take any applications oh. for new members. So I said, oh man, so I complained to my friend, in, indefatigable. Do you know who he is? Oh yeah, I know him. Okay, so in, I call him Indy. So I complained to Indy. I didn't know that Indy, besides being a fantastic, uh, you know, musician, singer, uh, all round uh, jack of all trades, he also used to code uh, for these Wall Street firms. He knows how to code. So he I told like him, bot maker extraordinaire. Yeah. So I. He's also my, you know, uh, he's also my uh, parcel co-owner co uh, in crypto voxels. He's the one who got me into crypto voxels. So he's just really, uh, he's like a catalyst for me. So I, when I told him that I was bummed that I couldn't get into known origin, he said that we'll do it ourselves. But get this, he found a way to do it with music. So we're making musical interactive uh, NFTs. Wow. Three, these are 360. They have music. Uh, and and you can do more than one song. You can have a hot spot in the thing where you click on it and it takes you into the next song. Or or you can you could do a duet with two songs playing at the same time. And if you move your cursor one way, it's one song and it takes over, and the other one goes the other way. Just that just amazing so stuff. Cool. So <laughs> that's that's what we're working. So we we launched our first. We we minted our first one yesterday just so I could talk about it today. So I'm going to drop the link now. This is Ooh, the premiere. Yes. This is the drop premiere. That link. Here, here it comes. This, uh, let's see me copy and I'm going to paste it. And it's on OpenSea. And uh, he minted this one on, on, oh, wait a minute. That's, that's not the musical one we did. That's the first ever musical NFT. Uh, NFT that's a 360 interactive. See that cop car? If you play that, if you go to OpenSea and play that, uh, Indie's music is in the background. So that's, that's the first what I call musical photosphere. So here's the, here's the one that we did together, and this is my first piece. Uh, and it's my artwork mapped to the inside of a sphere. And we got the music uh, from, a, from a free um, music place in England. And it's Bach. And it's like a, it's like a stained glass cathedral, and uh, if you click on that, you you can uh, open up the open. It'll play on Open C, and uh, you can hit full screen, and the image is uh, eighty one ninety two pixels, so it's huge. It fills up your whole screen, and you can zoom in on it. You can if you hit the plus and minus keys, you can uh, get some cool effects. 
And, and this is just the start. We're going to do so many of these musical uh, interactive NFTs, and I don't. I think they're the first of their kind. I don't think anybody else is doing musical interactive NFTs. And we can, you could actually do a whole album in one NFT if, if you wanted to. Dude, I, I had to send that link to my computer so I could open it up in OpenSea and check it out. This is crazy. Thank you. So cool. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a whole nother like, level of interactivity. Uh, I saw very recently, just maybe a couple of weeks back, um, on, maybe it was a month back, on Picket Nump. There was like an interactive audio NFT. Now it's nothing like this. It's a it's a flat image, but you could click on it with your mouse, and it would kind of make like a um, like a little circle of color, and a, a tone would start. And then you click okay. somewhere else, and another oh, tone cool. would start. And then you get these like loops going. So you can just like anytime you open up that NFT, you can make a different little trippy oh, loop of awesome. tones and in 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 colors. And it was really cool. So like I I, I think it was that. only a couple. Tez or something I grabbed really? it I was like wow this is very inventive and it made me think like this is very basic it's just 2D and there's kind of like a, a, a small amount of interaction you can do to create color and tone but it made right. me think about where that could go and you guys are already like you know way well, way deeper well see that see we wanted to get on async music and, yeah. and I thought I've already been approved for async or but I haven't done anything there just I didn't come up with an idea but, but I thought, well, since I'm approved for async art, then I should be able to get uh, a partner in there who's a musician. But it doesn't work that way. You have to be invited as a musician. Oh. So, so you can't you can't just go to them and say, oh, have, let me fill out the app and I'm in your music thing. No, they're only inviting certain musicians. So, uh, so we thought, well, what can we do, you know, musically that, that would be where we could... You can tell a story. I mean, you could have it a whole album if, if you wanted to in one of these NFTs. Just just by the code, you could have a, a hot spot somewhere in the picture where you could press on it and you, you're into the next song. And you can also have a new scene. So you, you don't have to stick with the same visual. Now, now, most of these photospheres or image spheres that you'll see, the camera that's recording the surface is in the center of the sphere, right? And when you and when you scroll with your cursor, you're on the surface. But but the, the you don't have to use a single image. You could use a a video, okay, that moves. So, uh, for an example, and here I'll give you an example. Say you're in the airport and you're on the people mover, right? And you're going yeah. down the gate. You know, you're going by all the different gates. You're on the people mover, going down the middle. And you can look around, right, as you travel. Well, imagine you're in a sphere or a series of spheres, and your camera is moving. And as it's moving, it can look around and see everything. And each sphere you go into is different. That could be an NFT. Whoa. It doesn't have to stay in the center and just look around in a fixed position. It can move. So we're going to do some of those. That's going to Can't be awesome. Wait to see some of that. Yeah. And that's interesting. I didn't realize that, although I guess that makes sense, that the async uh, music and async art is a fully separate application and artist roster. Um, I was actually accepted to async art too, and I'm super excited about it. But, uh, you know, and I have one idea that it, it would take a long time to do. So I'm not like rushing to put out a piece, but I am thinking about, you know, uh, doing something over there and, and trying to come up with maybe an idea. My, like my original idea will just, it's pretty involved. So I'm trying to think of something I could do uh, maybe a little less intense to, to start out or work with a couple people or something. So uh, and, yeah, maybe we, could, maybe we could do some collab over there. It, it, maybe, not, maybe we should do collabs, you know, uh, we should do, maybe we should do a hip hop 3D um, uh, interactive 360. With that all would be awesome. Huh? I mean, why not? Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. So, uh, uh, what did I just upload here? I just uploaded something. Let's see if it's loaded. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have this sunset here. See this sunset? That's on. Uh, that's a GIF, a landscape GIF that I'm doing, but it has um, uh, moray patterns that grow, that go in and out. 
I just wanted to show off some different stuff. It's, like, uh, it's just so, so hypnotic. Like, honestly, I've been mostly just staring at the art and not being as active in the chat today than I usually am. Well, well the, before I Indy, you know, Indy was working on the code and he didn't get he our first mint was yesterday. Right. But for two weeks, I've been I've been, you know, fear of missing out on these. I wanted them to be done immediately. So what I do is there's a there's a website where you can upload one of these equi rectangular uh, images that that are that could be mapped on a sphere, and the website's called uh, roundme.com. I'm gonna I'm gonna write it here so you guys could go check it out. It's awesome. it's really cool. So go to roundme.com. There it is. And and you can upload uh, if you know how to create a an equi rectangular image that's you know kind of flared out on top and bottom so it can be mapped to a sphere then you can upload it there and uh, that's what i did with this one with the color spots here that i so what i do is is once i get it uploaded on round me i can make the the website it's free by the way i make it full screen and then i i capture the screen with another app so then I can add music to it. You know, I can go get it and then make an MP4 and then post that. So on Twitter, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I think I've done 15 of them so far. Uh, I'm going to put my Twitter link down here. Well, you, you already have it, but I'll put it down again. Uh, yeah, drop it. And, so you can go fact, see it. You just gave me a new idea because we have the POAP links channel, but I'm going to change it to the POAP and links channel so that we have a running uh, consistent place where people can go to look for links after the show. And because they get kind of lost in the chat, you know, and you, we drop them every once in a while, but want to let everybody know that you can check out POAP links and I'll be changing the name to POAP and links for the Twitter, Insta, SphericalArt.com, Super Rare, Maker's Place, uh, Terra Virtua, the Showtime, the crypto voxels headquarters all that good stuff so yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening this year you know this space is amazing because people keep inventing new ways to do things and uh it's just happening all the time i i would like to get on uh i've got my tezos ready to get on to hit, uh hit eggnog <laughs> and i'm going to try that uh but there's so many other things to, to the, you know, there's so many things waiting to be done, like async art. Uh, there's uh, the whole Matic world, you know, and and cargo and all that stuff. And then, you know, the, you don't have to have a lot of, you know, you can get on, use Tezos or Matic. You don't have to have a lot of money to start throwing, putting a lot of art out there. And so that's, yeah. that's great now. I mean, so yeah, we've had we had super high gas fees, but I've noticed that I've seen them down now as low as five guay. Oh man, I love it when that happens. The other day it was down to five and I was like, oh my God, I got to send some stuff from like an old wallet, you know, to like my current wallet, it's a couple of wearables and things. And literally I had been waiting like a year to do that. And finally, I yeah, when it was like under 10, I was like, woohoo, I can change some stuff over. But yeah, the gas put a big kind of, um, you know, it was like pull the e-brake on a lot of uh, the, the regular, you know, sized artists, not like the big A-list, you know, people that are making a lot of ETH and selling stuff for thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's it's not an issue. But if you're right. putting stuff out for a little bit and the gas is equivalent or more, it just it puts a stop to it. Same thing with like small DeFi ventures when gas is that bad. But it is okay. great that we're having more platforms come up like the the hit eggnog. By the way, I think everybody should call it hit eggnog from now on. Um, and Matic. You, you know, bought a drink one. <laughs> but yeah it's and then also uh which we haven't touched on a lot the whole wider metaverse where so much is opening up with somnium space uh obviously crypto voxels and then decentraland and sandbox and like there's so much happening uh it's yeah. pretty just it's like it's it's not even possible to really keep track these days yeah, i mean i remember you have to yeah. choose a lane you have to choose yep. a lane and jump in yeah yeah, it's it. If you can, if you can keep up, then you're amazing. But most people can't keep up. I have a lot of. I have. I have to just resign myself to not being with it on a lot of stuff because you, you, you can waste a lot of time chasing stuff, or you can create. And I have to create every day.
Oh, I have to ask you, what does O-V-O-T mean? Oh, that means our vibe, our tribe. And uh, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people have had a, a similar experience when they, you know, come over into Lad City and it's just so warm and welcoming and there's so many different interests and, and overlap there that it's just, you know, it, we really do have a, like a tribe and, and uh, you know, handful of people have come and kind of, you know, found Lad City as one of their first communities. And it's like, yeah. it's just for me right away, you know, I saw... Uh, I think it was Nifty Q and Ronan the Collector uh, yeah. on a earlier uh, YouTube, and I was like, "Wow, these guys are awesome!" Like, I just yeah, elbows here. Yeah, yeah, elbows here. We got a bunch of bunch of peeps, so we've crossed and GB. really well. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of the family here, so it's just another extension, you know, of our of our uh, metaverse family, and and uh, you know, yeah, I I like I mentioned, I saw a show and was like, they're cool, I want to go check them out. Came over to a Discord, uh, got on uh, the mic with Crypto Buffalo, uh, who does the Lads Radio, and just like you know, had a great conversation. Felt so just you know, everything clicked, and I was like, I want to do some stuff with you guys, and from there we just sort of got on some calls and worked things out, and here we are you know easy streets now out on youtube as well as being here and we're we're slowly kind of building it up and uh other shows have been starting up so there's pretty much almost a show uh every day of the week and there's a friday's lads day and there's a bunch of shows that go down so yeah OVOC. i've noticed the shows yeah i've been checking out the schedule i like this the way that you you can click on the schedule for your time zone and everything's yeah. laid out there you don't have to do any calculation that's great really uh, nice Hey, hey um, so I dropped I dropped these images further up the chat line the stream here with these two faces. I just wanted to mention when, when I did this uh, Crypto Voxels Gallery show, Headspace, I figured that, that heads, 3D head models were like, um, like spheres, right? You could put a camera inside a head and put lights inside the head. So like this green guy here is who's sleeping with the fishes, he's... That's the inside of his head. So his nostrils are protruding out towards you, which is very strange. And, and when you turn it, he, it the, when, you, when I turn it, the head or the camera in my 3D program, it's spooky because you turn it one way and the head moves the other way, the opposite way you would expect. The Tricky. face does, because it's, it's an inside out face. And it's the same thing with the one, the guy who looks like he's an orange there, the white man in the orange head. He, he's... he's and He's looking outside, the back of his skull's missing, and he's looking out the back side. That is a very trippy one. I mean, both are. And yeah, the like even without looking at it uh, in a in a spheroid shape, like the when I first saw that green one, I was like, I was just kind of tripping out because like, yeah, it's not quite like the normal view, but I couldn't quite place it until you started saying that. And then I saw like, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Why it's kind of just like there's just something a little like spooky about it or you know it's just yeah, it's, it's a very different it's like surreal. there's a little unsettling thing that it does but it's rad like it, it really does have an impact um and then yeah the the other one that's now i had noticed that you have that's uh, my uh my avatar yeah that's yeah. Avatar. Whereas yeah. previously, I was so used to your avatar being uh, your the the spherical art like logo uh, yeah. that yeah, even in the chat like a few times recently, I was like, where is it? And I was looking for those colors, you know, because you kind of right. get used to it and it's small yeah. on the phone screen. And I was like, oh yeah, he swatched swatched it to the to the skull guy. That's amazing work. Thanks. Hey, uh, I don't know how much time we have left, but I, I did bring some other uh, pictures of other people's art that I've. Of showcased on um, on my podcast, and if you, you guys would like to see, some, it would give you an idea of the type of artists that I that I'm discovering and talking about. Absolutely. Hey, Jose, yes, I yes. see Jose uh, Acabrarev. I always have a hard time saying his last name, but hey, Jose, good to see you here. Um, so anyway, I have to show you this. I want to show you this guy. He's from Sicily. And his name is Marco, and I met him in Clubhouse, uh, which is strange. But uh, he's a dancer. He's one of the first dancers uh, doing NFT dance. Check that out. Yep. Dude, yeah. that's right. I bought one of his pieces. You bought one at, of his pieces? At your show. Let me, let me go see if I can find the piece that I got because I really like it. And, um, you know, I had just recently heard. Um, I hey, don't... good for you, Elmo. 
I don't think it was Clubhouse, but it could have been, uh, where there was a conversation about dance NFTs. Um, and it's something that I think is very new to the space, but I do think that, you know, these, these um, other forms of arts, these motion arts and theater basically will, will be coming to NFTs. Uh, and I think it's really interesting. And so when you were talking about uh, this on your show, I instantly was like, you know, connecting and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Someone's doing it. And so well, I just, went- It's so inexpensive too. Yeah. You didn't oh charge a lot of money. It's like $20. Yeah. Yeah, How could you I not thought, buy it? I thought right away, this is a steal. And I really liked the move that was in this piece. Uh, oh, so I just- Did you get this one up. where he, he puts his hand on his ankle? Yeah, it's like oh, it's really cool. I was thinking, like, man, that that looks lucky. painful to me, but he, it, you know, he's a dancer. He's got strong ligaments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you you also bought one of uh, Lisa Fogarty's pieces, didn't you? That is true. So you're turning okay. me on. Dude, I've been to a couple of your shows. Every time you're basically turning me on to some amazing art. And the Lisa piece, I think I, I mean, I think she just like gave she, it to me. It's because I put amazing. in a bid that was not super high. Um, and I just was like, oh, I love her stuff. I'll put in a bid. I mean, it wasn't a super low ball or anything, but I was really pleased when I, when I got it. I was like, oh my God, she accepted. I was so happy. Yeah, she's great. She's, she's really, uh, she's fun to, to watch on Twitter because she makes... She, she makes some really uh, strong statements, and she's entertaining. Uh, you know what she says? She's, her, uh, her subhead says on Twitter, says, probably your favorite uh, NFT artist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then she says, and then she says I'm, I'm, uh, when I first saw her, her page, she said, I'm 1.2% famous. And um, so I told her, after I bought her a couple of her pieces, I told her, you know, you should... Uh, you should up it by like a tenth of a degree every once in a while, just to keep people on their toes. And she, she laughed, and so she's up to she's up to three point something percent famous now, which is pretty cool. Nice, <laughs> love it. Yeah, there's there's so many great artists. You know, not every um, artist that I'm going to cover is going to be affordable. Like I have uh, an artist that I'm going to talk about next Monday, who you know he started out really affordable, and but he had a plan. And now, you know, you need, you need bags and bags of money to get one of these pieces. So, no, um, yeah. It's really, it's really smart, I think, when you're starting in the space to kind of just, even if you feel like this piece is worth more, I mean, and I don't know, there's, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at this, but in my opinion, when you're starting out to sell things that, you know, kind of anybody could pick up if it's, you know, you know, anybody that's into collecting NFTs, if you're selling it for, you know, a uh, hundred or a couple hundred, depending, you know, obviously, if you worked on it for weeks, it's going to be more than, you know, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, but to, to keep to that lower end of the pricing so that you can get a, a collector base kind of growing uh, and, and reach more people. And then if you start, you know, picking up steam, you can bump that price up a little and little, and you're going to hopefully, you know, be able to earn more of a steady income that way, but not necessarily just like right away expect to be making, you know, like multiple ETH off your pieces. Um, yeah, that's you're just right. my opinion. Well, I think, uh, I think marketing is its own art form. And, and, and most artists are really good at art. And they're not really good at marketing. But every once in a while, somebody comes along who's, who's fantastic in both. And those are the guys who shoot to the top right away because they, they do extra stuff that makes collectors want to buy. Yeah. Um, and and you know, uh, I'm thinking of a guy in particular that I heard talk about his strategies. Uh, he had his, all of his strategies, you know, three or four months down the road, all figured out for you know, he was moving, you know, all these chess uh, moves in advance in his mind about how he was going to, you know, entice people to get his stuff. So that, and that's uh, that's like an art in itself. And, and I, I don't have that ability. And so it was really fascinating to me. And so I'm, I'm going to see if I can find out more about him. But uh, yeah, yeah, let's get him on and share that genius because, yeah, I definitely... Genius. I yeah. don't have, you know, I have ideas, but I don't have plans laid out like months ahead of time. Yeah, and he has execution plans, you know. Uh, yeah. So and offering that 
like extra content is is huge in my opinion uh shout out to kane mayfield who's in the audience and he was on just uh, a week ago um and every once in a while you know i've got a couple of his nfts and every once in a while i'll just have a new nft from him and i'm like oh man that's so rad it's so appreciated and it just makes me want to put that support back you know so it, it builds this back and forth relationship with your collectors and i think it, it there's huge advantages to that yeah it, it, it's uh, yeah. I, I don't know how to think that way. I have to learn it. It's something that I would have to learn. It doesn't come naturally to me to to, to hustle and do hype. I've always relied on people hearing about me word of mouth and then seeking me out. So I don't I don't usually seek other people out. Although I have to say collaboration. I was never into collaboration until I got into NFTs. I didn't know how you could collaborate with somebody pre-NFT world because, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Go to their, I guess you, you could swap digital files and work on them, but it just never happened. But ever since I got into NFTs, people have approached me and I've approached other people. And every time I've said yes, it's worked out great. So um, sometimes you have to maybe, I guess, even if somebody you ask you to collaborate, but you didn't think they were very good, you could still make an amazing piece with what they gave you if, if you have the imagination. And that happened to me a couple of times where I thought, do I really want to do something with this person? And, and I did, and it turned out great. So <laughs> That's sometimes, awesome. yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, well, I, the first guy who wanted to collaborate with me was Rhyolite. You oh, wow. Him? Yes. And oh, man, kind of just broke my heart there. It broke uh, my heart, too. Yeah. Rhyolite I don't know if you guys who know who Rhyolite is, but, you know, if, if you go, I think if you type his name in or like I still have in my, uh, you know how there's a history of your DMs and you can scroll down and see old DMs. I still yeah. have DMs from Rhyolite. Rhyolite was a young guy in his I, late 30s, early 40s. Yeah, wife and I think, kids. I think he had a dream late job. 30s. Yeah, he had a dream job that he'd worked at for 10 years in, in uh, uh, artificial intelligence and mapping the human brain. And he was the public face of this company. He would go out and describe the structures of the brain and how AI was going to duplicate them or try to. And, uh, and he made these videos and, and gave talks, you know, like TED Talks and things like that. And he wanted to, he has a dream job, but he wanted to quit so that he could do NFTs. He wanted to be an NFT artist. And, and he approached me and when I first got into uh, Discord and he said, do you want to, um, do, can we collaborate somehow? And um, so I said, well, I, I use triangular pieces of art that I map on sometimes onto triangles in, in my models. And so he sent me a triangular piece of art and I did it and uh, we didn't mint it or anything. I just, I, I did it and he liked it. I sent it back to him and then uh, he died in his sleep. And yes. I don't really understand how, uh, super, why. Super, like super um, unexpected. Like he was yeah. healthy. There wasn't any kind of like underlying condition that they knew about and, you know, had a, a wife and I believe two kids. Um, yeah. And yeah, it just, like we were one day all kind of hanging out in crypto voxels and this was back in kind of the early scent days and he had a great sense of humor, super nice guy. I mean, I yeah. didn't have like super in-depth conversations, but we knew each other and we'd banter. Um, and then this happened so like out of the blue and I think it might've even been like the day before a whip and it just like, it shook us all to the core, just like having a member of the community, young, healthy, aspiring, artistic, just, just gone. And yeah, I mean, you know, still, uh, it, we can all go at any time. That's what it tells yeah. you. There's Ryolite. There he is right there. Um, In fact, I have a Ryolite. Um, it's like this really cool kind of mandala type piece uh and it's up in my crypto voxels gallery with a little uh kind of like a um a little shrine uh just to you know have his art and memory there i think i'm gonna in one of my podcasts i'm gonna upload uh, the artwork that we did together and the piece that he sent me and uh oh wait a minute i got it right here i just found it so this is cool all right would so, love to see it okay so here's what he sent me 
I asked him for a triangular piece of art, and he sent me this. Okay. And, and he told me later, he says, you know, I was debating on whether I should send you uh, a triangle. I like the center part with the organic, um, you know, membrane. But he says, I don't know if I like the, the, the swashes that I put around it as the border. And, uh, but it turned out that when I did, I worked on it and incorporated it into the thing and it turned out, let me see if. Here, Depth? Here's how it turned out I think. Uh, when I finished it. And it turns out that the, the borders is what made the thing interesting. Whoa. Man, it looks like a map. It's like a DNA like... strand or something. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so crazy. Yeah, that is incredible. If you click on it and look at it bigger, you'll see all those, all those textures that he put into to it. I, did, I just colored them and, and, and warped them a little bit. But, you know, that's basically his stuff. Um, and he was really thrilled with that. You know, I, I remember that the saddest thing that, that happened was his wife um, posted a tweet saying that he had died to yeah. his followers. That was sad. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, it, it, and then I it thought still it was, like chokes me up. If we had, you know, if, if we had talked about minting this thing, then I would, I would want it to mint and then like, like, have her family, you know, get the profits you know, yeah. for everything, you know? So maybe yeah. uh, if somebody, if I could locate her, somebody uh, listening knows how to find Ryolite's wife, I would send her, uh, I'd either mint it and give it to her, or I would just give her the art and let her mint it in his memory, you know? Right. Oh, wow. That would be really cool if, if she has access. Cause that's another thing that, you know, somebody um, could do it for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Like, with the technology, like, you know, I'm sure that he had, you know, his, his books with the seed phrases and, and she's, you know, probably uh, been able to, you know, work all that out. Um, but that is something that is like, if you have a spouse, it might be really good to go over your seed phrases and things like that in case, God forbid, something happens so that your spouse can access yes, those yes, funds, you know, your art, all if that. If you're an old guy because, like me, <laughs> then you should have a will, right? And, and right. in your will... You should have, okay, you say you have a favorite niece or a granddaughter or whatever. They should get the, uh, they should get the key, the private key. And then they've got all your, uh, all your digital art. Hopefully you put it up on Dropbox somewhere or they can download it and, and put it on a thumb drive. And then, you know, they could mint this stuff and, and make their own money. And they've got your, yeah. uh, you know, they've got your coins. That you really need to do that. So, yeah. 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 You have to, uh, you know, check with your uh, somebody who can write up a, a will so that they can, and it's kind of tough because if you, I mean, how do you explain a, a browser wallet to somebody who doesn't know anything about crypto? You know, right. it, you, you'd have to write a really, uh, a treasure map. You'd have to write a treasure map. Basically. Like detail. Okay. Step one. <laughs> X marks the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I came up with an idea a few years back. I'll go through this really quick. And it was, it was called the crypto death wallet. And it was, if you, it would be like a wallet and a service where you're basically setting up your crypto will, right? So yeah. you would have, you know, this, this company, you'd have to have a service uh, involved because they'd be the ones that would basically walk your spouse or your you know loved ones, whoever's in your will kind of through the process. But you'd be able to basically give like, uh, let's say for me or you with lots of siblings, because I, I come from, you know, five boys, two girls, if you wanted to have, you know, uh, something set up so that if you passed, you know, a email would be securely sent to like each one of your siblings and each would have, you know, uh, part of the seed phrase. So no one could like go cash out and then they'd go through this multi basically wallet. service. <laughs> Yeah, multi-sig through this service that's the crypto death wallet, and then it helps you kind of get everything parsed out, uh, you know, in the way that the person had envisioned. Like it might be all my stuff gets put for sale, and when it, you know that goes in to USD and back to the people, or maybe it's just they're getting the assets and the crypto. Anyways, that's kind of a long rant, not not here nor there, but something like idea. that is kind of needed. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's a great idea to, to, to do something like that. Um, 
So what else can we talk about? <laughs> oh my God, we've covered so many bases. I think this is the best. This is the best interview I've ever had. Oh, this man. is. Thank this you is so awesome. much. I, I, it flew by. This has been a blast. I mean, if there's anything else uh, you want to touch on, we can touch on it. I usually try and keep it not too much over an hour um, yeah. just because I know everybody's time is pretty precious and whatnot. But yeah, if there's anything that uh, we uh, didn't touch we on. We covered so much more than I expected. Bringing up Ryle Light was, I, I had no intentions of doing that. And I'm, I'm still surprised that I was able to locate it on my hard drive where those images were. So uh, yeah. Really really special thank you for sharing that and i'm i'm glad i'm glad it came up because it although it like actually really tugs at uh, this you know spot like behind my heart um i also get some joy out of it because it's bringing back his memories and some of the times where we were joking around and just you know it, it also gives us sort of a, a step back to like you, you know appreciate every minute we have together well, it, it and, makes you, you know, it makes you realize you should appreciate other people that are here in, in the in the space with you because uh there's some really great people here and uh if they if they're gone tomorrow you're gonna miss them so, you know, show him some love now. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, he was really active in Discord and, and really active in the space and always volunteering to do stuff and, and wanting to be right there. He, he's kind of like you, Easy. So uh, <laughs> stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I'm planning on sticking around for the long haul. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we, we were kind of kindred spirits, even though we didn't get to have a lot of deep one on one. Whenever we crossed paths, we were always just kind of, you know, jiving off each other. And uh, yeah. it's it's nice to spend some time thinking about him and appreciating what he uh, helped to form, you know, that back in those early days, it was like, every person that was, you know, putting in that kind of time trying to make a dis difference helped shaped where we're at today. Exactly. And, and, you know, if you were to if you were to Google his name, you, you see that that he was um, that he had a lot of YouTube videos from his as a speaker about the science of um, this artificial intelligence. So, you know, he was a great speaker, teacher and presenter. And I didn't know all that stuff about him until until it was too late. I would have loved to have talked to him about that stuff. But that was that was what he wanted to get away from. He wanted to, to leave that and, and, and get into art. So, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. It, uh, art, art is a cultural phenomenon that brings people together. And, and we're right here in the thick of it, experiencing it. Absolutely. Man, this has been an absolutely wonderful show. Um, would love to do more stuff together. So yeah, let's let's connect about maybe trying to do a, a collab uh, over on the old async. And uh, I'm always yeah. going to be trying to make it to your shows and hope to definitely see you around here in Lad City more. Um, a lot yes. of other great content going down here, and just you know you, you know uh, our our casa su casa. And uh, yeah, great. welcome to the tribe. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Man, what a great, great show with Spherical Art. Absolutely had a blast. We did cover a lot of topics. Um, make sure uh, if you were watching over on YouTube and you enjoyed it, please give a like uh, and come on over to Lad City, L-A-D-Z dot C-I-T-Y, where you can get in on all the drops and, and you know, throw gifts back and forth at each other and snag these links. Uh, so hope to see more of you over here. Uh, we're doing the same thing uh, next time this week, same place, same spot. And tomorrow's Lads Day, a lot of great content. So make sure you guys all check in. I think with that, uh, much love and our vibe, our tribe.